Hey, it's been a while. How have you been? Hope all is well. Hope all is good. Yeah, it's been a while since I posted anything. Welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, hi, I'm Vicky. I'm your friendly Canadian who is on the JET program currently living in Japan. Sorry, this is not a travel video again. This is once again an informative JET video. This time on five unexpected items that you should bring when moving to Japan or overseas in general. So if you've passed, you've been selected as one of the people who is going to come and teach in Japan. Yay, congratulations. Yes, yes, you're very excited. We are all excited to have you here with us. Congratulations. By now you would have gotten your placement. Very exciting. Now you're deciding what to pack in your luggage with limited space. Well, don't worry. Let me show you five things that you should probably bring or not. Remember that every situation is different and what I brought or thought I should have brought, these might not apply to you. Just keep that in mind. So let's get started. Unexpected item number one, a body towel. So when you first arrive, most of you will be arriving during August. That is the hottest and most humid time in Japan. You're gonna want to shower when you get to your new place after you've done all your things, you've been out shopping all day, and you just want to shower. You bought soap and you bought shampoo from your grocery store. But then you realize you don't have a towel. Or you did buy a towel, but if you're like me, you want to wash it before you use it. Yeah, if you were like me, you would have brought a microfiber body towel with you. Yes, I got this one and it comes with a smaller one for your face. It dries pretty quickly and it's great. I bought it on Amazon in Canada. Have a body towel, bring it with you. Even if you end up bringing it and you don't use it, you could always bring it to a hot spring. Some hot springs don't have body towels for you to use. They expect you to bring it or you can rent or buy it from them. But why buy it? Or why rent it when you can just bring your own? Next! Unexpected item number two. Instant mixes. So while Japan does have its fair share of instant drinks and instant desserts, it doesn't taste the same as the ones back home. So as you know, I'm Canadian, as I've said at the beginning of this video. So every once in a while, I want Tim Hortons French Vanilla Cappuccino. Please note, this video is not sponsored by Tim Hortons or any of the brands I'm showing here. These are just things that I like to consume. Sometimes my throat is just feeling not so great. I kill whatever bacteria it is with my instant ginger drink. This one is honey flavored. And then sometimes it's very hard to find some certain desserts. Like this, it is hard to find when you're not living near a Chinatown or Chinese supermarket. These are great for when you want something sweet and it doesn't take too long to make and you can make it at work. Also, hot cocoa here doesn't taste the same as the ones back home. They're not as sweet. So bring a box or two while you're moving here and you'll have something as a small pick-me-up. Unexpected item number three, scissors. So on your first day when you arrive, either your supervising JTE or your board of education will bring you to go shop for your furniture and some appliances if you need to. Well, you're gonna need to open those boxes somehow. And while it is possible with your hands, I've done it. It's way easier with a pair of scissors, you know? That's what happened to me when I got my mattress over there. That one. It came in a box, I carried it up, and then my JTE left. So once my JTE left, I realized I had no scissors to open this box with. So I had to rip it open. It hurt my fingers. And then after that, the plastic was hard to open. It would have been so much easier if I had a pair of scissors. So remember, for your scissors, do not pack it in your carry-on. Remember to pack it in your luggage and ship it. Or remember to buy scissors while you're out. And now, unexpected item number four, eco bags. Yes, I know, everyone has eco bags now. The thing is, you need to remember to take it with you. As someone who drove in Canada, my eco bags were always in the car. During the first two weeks, I kept forgetting my eco bags at home. So when I went to the grocery store on my first night, I had to buy an eco bag. It was like a tiny thing for 700 yen. So like $7 for a bag. 
Now I just use them to collect my plastic bottles. So yeah, don't forget your eco bags. You can put two in your backpack, one for you and one for your ALT friend who forgot theirs. And last, unexpected item number five, a USB. So some schools won't provide you with a work laptop or an iPad. So you'll need to make lesson plans on your own computer. The thing is, at my school, I don't have access to print things remotely from my laptop. So what I do is that I need to bring my file onto a USB and bring it to my school's communal computer in order to print it. The thing is, my computer is a MacBook that takes USB-C and then my school is an actual like PC that has USB 3 ports. That's why I got this little USB. So it has a USB-C end and it also has a USB 3 end. So with this, I can just have one USB for my work. So I won't need to bring a USB converter in order to print anything. It's small and it can fit in my pencil case. I left a link in the description so you can go check that out. Uh, you don't need to get this one specifically. There are many others. Choose whichever suits you the most. So those are five unexpected items that you should probably bring to Japan. I hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget your formal wear. You have orientation when you arrive. Leave a comment to let me know what you would bring if you were moving to Japan or abroad. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in my next video. Eventually. Bye-bye!